Okay, so welcome to Navigating Geographic Data, uh, the Simple Interactive Maps module for Drupal. Um, we're going to spend part of the presentation discussing the background of the module, what drove us to develop this, um, how we're using it, and then we're going to go into a demo to actually show you the module in action. So. There we go. So, a uh, little introduction. Uh, Jason Murray, that's me. Uh, I work for Mabomo. I'm a technical lead, technical supervisor, one of their Drupal engineers. I've been working in uh, web development since 2005, working with Drupal since 2009. So, I've seen Drupal 6 through 10, working with 11 now. So, been a good time. Um, managed to work with a lot of different verticals before coming to government. Uh, I've been working with commercial, education, nonprofits. Uh, so I've, I've had a broad range of experience, uh, all of which fed into what we've done here. Uh, as I said, I work for Mabon. So this is our, our shameless plug as a sponsor as well. So we're out at uh, table three. Be, feel free to come up and talk to us. Some of our clientele. Pandemic Oversight, NOAA, USGS. Across the board. So, why are we here? Yeah, the eternal question of every philosopher, but it's a lot easier for us. One of the things we're not talking about in this, just to get this out of the way, we're not talking about really in depth data. If you're needing geocoding, if you're needing location, tracking, if you're needing anything like that, this really isn't the place for you. You know, we're looking for simple geographies, you know, single tier of geography. If you've got states, if you've got counties, those are the things we're going to be looking at. You know, we're going to be looking for ge simple geographic boundaries as a gateway to your information. And whether you have any need to customize your maps. Again, in there, simple. This is the big word. We don't, this is not an overly complicated module. This is not intended for any in-depth use. This is meant for that use case that we've seen over and over again. Keep it simple. <laughs> so, the, the problem that we had to solve, really, it's a common problem I've seen, as I said, in many verticals. I've seen this in nonprofits. I've seen this in education. But I see it more so in government because government has that kind of inherent relationship to geography. You need to be able to take a look at what regions your government agency is covering and how do they relate to each other. How is your their data related to these regions? So that's what we're looking at here. You know, there's a, a wide range of reasons why we'd be using a module like this. Whether it's going to be a simple visual presentation, you have a map that shows in colors some relationship to the data, or it's going to be a way to access that data, whether you're navigating through the site, whether you're clicking on that to give the user some interaction that allows them to view something particular to that data, to that map. You know, a lot of the different solutions we've all seen for this, I mean, ArcGIS, you know, seriously, the, the 10,000 pound gorilla in the room, if you're already dealing with them, you don't need this module. <laughs> Google Maps, OpenStreetMaps, other, you know, the other, you know, slightly smaller, 900 pound gorillas in the room. These guys are great. I've done a lot of work with them, but a lot of times they can also be much, very much overkill. You don't need everything they do. You don't need the panning, the zooming, being able to look at the various layers of imagery. Then you have your simple HTML maps, the stuff that been around for years. You have your JPEG, you have a map element that maps hotspots on that to URLs. And then, then finally, the SVG maps, those items that you see commonly, and that's really what we're basing things on here. 
Uh, they scale well. They can be very interactive, but they can be very difficult to put together, very difficult to customize. So when, was, when we are looking at some of these, you know, definitely Google Street Maps, like we said, this is one of the 900 conferences. Excellent for showing real world data. It's perfect for that. It's what it's meant for. You know, it can be used for near real time data. It's overkill in a lot of cases that I've seen it used for. And I've, I've used it in places where it wasn't just not appropriate. It can be forced to do just about anything. Whether or not you want to do that is the big question. You know, it's developer intensive, no matter what. You're going to need developers to do this and to make any modifications. And depending on the level of use, it's going to cost a lot of money. <coughs> you know, back to the image element, this is old school. This is very old school. Um, I actually still have some sites that have this in place. This is live code you're seeing here. Um, again, developer intensive. If your clients want to make changes to this, you're going to have to get your developers involved, your designers involved, and work, worry about deploying code. Additionally, we've discovered that responsive scaling of this can be painful when trying to make a mobile version of your website. And then, of course, the custom maps. This is where a lot of a lot of times you'll see solutions fall. You'll have your designers come in, develop the map. Your de developers will come in behind them, apply the JavaScript, apply any customizations, and then push this out as a single piece of code, whether in a template. So, so our solution to all this is. This module. We're working with the U.S. Department of Education right now. They are in the process of migrating from WordPress to Drupal. They had a custom WordPress module in their site that allowed them to embed a 50-state map in any site and add some customization to it: links, uh, color, stroke width, you know, common styling options and common interactions. The map was, it was limited to the one base map though. Every map had to be their 50 state map with territories. They're able to reuse them throughout the site. They have, I believe we, last time I looked, there were 15 maps we were migrating. But those maps are probably on 40 different pages in different, you know, being used as navigation. So when we looked at these requirements, we sat down and looked at a lot of the options that were already available. You know, Geofield map, GMAP module. Uh, a lot of people have probably used these modules. They are Google Maps based, OpenStreetMap based. They pull data from these large services. Deep integration with Drupal. They're great if you have geographic data such as points, lines. You have encoded data. You have geocoding going on. These work great for that. Again, overkill for those items that are just a simple presentational map or a simple navigational tool. We also looked at just finding those particular maps in their site and said, well, what if we, for the sake of expediency, just take these maps and create a static block out of each one? serve it for its own purpose. And yes, that would have achieved the base need for the migration, but it would have not allowed their site maintainers to add more maps, to update them, to make any changes. So again, your developer involvement was way up, requires deployments, more money, and that's not something that they wanted. And so we saw, we, we also looked at the custom development option, which is, of course, where we went. It provided, allowed us to do a more scalable solution. Uh, yes, we have developer time up front, determine what their needs are, determine what we need to do. But in the end, it's a scalable solution for them. So, as I said, the final decision was we went with the uh, custom module. We sat down, we looked at what they were using in this WordPress 
tool, we looked at what their actual needs were, pared it down to their MVP. They wanted to have a simple interface for any content editor to be able to create and edit these maps. We wanted them to be reusable throughout the site. And we also made them to be exportable so that they're maintained with a revision control at this point, so that they have a history of what's changed. They are able to create them in lower environments and deploy them. Up. All things that Drupal does very well. And as a bonus, when we showed them our proof of concept, and mentioned the idea of possibly making this a contribute module, they were really excited about this. And they said, yeah, let's give this back to the community. Let's do what we can here. And that's simple interactive maps. There's more. This is actually one of the maps that's going to be on the new Department of Education website when it launches later this month. So just to give you an idea of what, what you see, this is what the base map that ships with the core module itself. You know, 50 states, multiple uh, territories, as well as some additional items. Their map is actually slightly customized from what's shipped in the module for the one extra section there, the Bureau of Indian Education as a virtual region. So, like I said, one of the things we did is we wanted to extend this beyond just having that one base map. We didn't want this just to be a 50 state map module because that's, that's a little hanging fruit. We wanted something that was going to be a lot more flexible and meet a lot more needs. So we put together a plug-in architecture that allows us to create multiple base maps. So when you create a new map within the site, you'll have the option to select what your base map is. And I'll be demoing all this after we get through the slides. Uh, currently, we have a couple of sub-modules that ship. We have not only the 50-state map, we have the county maps of all 50 states and most of the territories. And we also have the current congressional district maps for all 50 states. All this data is derived from Census Bureau data, shapefiles, very easy to convert over. And uh, you know, our goal is to open this up, make sure that the community has the documentation to be able to create any map sets they want, and create custom maps for their specific needs as well. The other side of this is the interactive, the interactions themselves. Being able to do something with a map besides just having me a pretty picture on the site. Um, we have a couple of base items that come in. Everything has tooltip options. Hover over it, get some data, rich text. It has a click to display modal interaction. That's your typical modal pop up. Click on the state, pop up a window with some more text, whatever rich text you want in there. Navigate to URL. This is one of the big things that a lot of these maps are used for. So very simple interaction there. And then we have another one, which is an Ajax load. This is something we added after the fact because it allows you to do a drill down. You can take the state maps, or the 50 state map, drill down to an individual state showing counties, and then come back out again. All this is built around plugins, and there will be documentation that will allow you to create your own custom interactions, anything you could possibly need coming out of these maps. The map allows for grouping of the active regions. So if you have, for example, the standard five regions of the United States, you can group them all together. And those groups will allow you to override specific features of each region so that you will have consistent styling, consistent interactions, consistent tooltips. And it's a, it's a great way to put together a lot of data very quickly when you don't need to, when you need to have to do it. It has, uh, we got away from using a standard off-the-shelf SVG library early on. Uh, we do a lot of custom SVG handling under the hood, create the maps within Drupal, and then deliver them. Part of that is the bounding box calculation. This currently supports SVG path elements. We're currently working on getting 
polygons and other shapes, less, less used shapes involved. It will calculate the bounding box to ensure that the entire map is displayed on screen properly. And the ability to do that gives you a really nice side effect in that as you hide regions, the map will zoom in. So you can go in and say, I need to hide everything but the East Coast, and it will zoom to that. So you will not have this large white space left on your map. So your maps are highly dynamic in that way. Also coming soon, and I will actually be able to demo this, is what I'm calling a sparse map. All the maps you've seen, the imagery so far, the map has been a continuous set of individual regions that make up everything. What they don't allow is to have a container element, for example. Um, a good example of that is the map of this conference center. The only active sections, for example, are the conference rooms, are the vendor tables, and you know we're not worried about the overall shape of the building, but it's important to the map in that case. And that's what's coming up next. That's our, our next release at this point. Uh, but like I said, I will be able to demo that for you because the code is almost ready. So, exportable configuration. This is, of course, Drupal's strength. You know, export all of this, get it into your revision control. You can bundle these into separate libraries. So you can create a whole set of maps for your client, have them pre-installed, one module. The region editor is graphical. Instead of just having a list of regions, while a list is available, instead of having just a full list of regions, it actually displays the regions on the map as the map is supposed to be stopped. And that way you can actually see what you're doing, see the changes in near real time as you make them. The only item we run into is when you hide items, you, of course, they're hidden from this as well. You'll have to go back to the table, table editor in order to bring them back. It also has built into it tools for exporting and importing data. So we can export all of the regions into a CSV file, provide that CSV file to whoever's handling the data, and they can do mass updates. They can re-import it and apply it immediately. Uh, regions are the same. This was a, a specific requirement of the Department of Education that we found was really helpful. So it carried over. <coughs> Um, embedding, standard Drupal embedding features have the ability to embed directly through CK under 5, has its own block plugin so that it can be used anywhere within the site where you can place blocks. So, yeah, at this point we'll switch over to the demo. Let's make sure the mouse works. Can you uh, stop the slideshow, please? Okay. Turn to the see what better. Okay, so what we've got here is a just basic Drupal site, spun up in DDEV, ready to go. So I'm in your structure menu now. You will contain an interactive maps menu, and that's where you'll create and maintain all of your maps. So let's just go ahead and just provide a label for it, please. <laughs> Thank you. And so here we go. You can see I've got the Congressional District Map Module enabled. I've got the Census Bureau, or the, the county maps enabled. Now. So let's just start with the basic U.S. States map. We can provide text, any descriptive text you want that can be toggled to display or not as needed. Um, and then we have some base color choices, and these are configurable in the configuration menu. So we go ahead and save this, and there we go. We have now a base map to work with. So we can come in here. Um, again, basic information here. The map, of course, is not editable once you set it. Um, and then you get into your region editor. So, for example, let's choose Maryland here. 
So you have your tooltip text, your colors, so we can go ahead and get this nice bright green. And there it is. And you'll notice that it does allow for linked regions. So they are considered to be a single element as far as the system is concerned. So let's come back in here. So now we're back in and we have our behaviors. This is where the interactions are actually set. And in this case, we can select any of our options here. So uh, can you uh, provide me a link to Momo? With schema, please. HTTPS. Okay, so now we preview the map. And here we go. Here's the export tools. We can go ahead and export the region data. And so, let's see right here. Here's the navigate URL, settings, and everything's right there. Very easy, very easy to add. Okay, so let's show some little, a few more, more uh, advanced maps. Okay, so as I said, we have Melo's in, and I was really hoping to have this in front of me. Okay, so I need to uninstall that. My apologies. I thought this was all set. Yeah. Okay, so module. As you can see, it's now installed a bunch of maps for us. So, as we said before, we, have, we can go ahead and edit or embed these into pages. So, let's go ahead and just edit the page at this point. It provides a thumbnail image, tells you which map, whether or not the descriptive text is enabled. <clears throat> and there we go. So, this particular map, we've got most of them. You can see we all have all of the tooltips or so. I'm going to show the label and click for state information. In each case, it's taking us to the individual state website. So, there's Texas. Flora. Common use case for this map, well, this module is right here. It's going to be to navigate through your site, navigate to other sites as the, as the data is needed. Now, this also has a couple of uh, other interactions set up. For example, New York State. This is the Ajax loader. It's just drilled down from New York State to show the state, show all the counties. And now at the county level, you know, St. Lawrence County, Hamilton County, I can do the same thing there. And I can I'll show you another example. You can continue drilling down as far as you need, and it will maintain the relationships and allow you to back out to the previous map in every case. Uh, another option here, uh, Pennsylvania. This is under construction, just like Interstate 81 is from one end of the state to the other, as I discovered yesterday driving down here. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the mobile, mobile content model right there. So. 
I'll show some of the other map styles that we've got. You've seen uh, the county maps. Um, so for example, let's look at the New York State Congressional Districts. If you can't tell, I'm from New York, so. So, here we go, New York State. Congressional District 21, the big, great wilderness where I live. But you'll notice the map gets a little hard to read down here at the bottom, around New York City. You have all these very small regions. This is where that Ajax builder comes in handy. You build your group, and you put everything that needs to be in all that detail here, the New York City districts. And to create that, it's very simple here in the region editor. Once you've created that group, you come down, you click on any one of these districts, and you select your group. Save it, and you're done. And now, that group, if we edit that, you'll see that it has its own action set. In this case, it's a load map, and it shows the city congressional districts map. So, when we save this, and you can see right here, it says it overrides the action, it overrides the coloring, and it overrides the tool tip. So, where all of these larger districts show the, the name as the tool tip, we've now overridden everything in this area to click for more detail. And when you click on it, there's New York City, zoomed up and all to the So, and then we can back out. So, and this is also an example, as I, I mentioned earlier, of the dynamic bounding box. The map being used, the base map being used for this is the same base map that's being used for the whole state. All the hidden items are gone, it recalculates and fits it to your screen. So one thing with the bounding box calculation, and I should have mentioned this earlier, if you hide things in the middle, that's not going to help you. <laughs> so we got rid of a lot of the flyover states, and I know they're upset about that, but as you can see, it had no effect on the rest of the map. Uh, my apologies to anybody from that area, it's not how I truly feel. But, uh, I think at this point we've shown most of the uh, items here. You know, as we said, we had the, the groups already kind of shown it to you. And in this case, we have no interactions to override our groups, just to override act, you know, so whether or not they override actions. You know, in this case, you know, the northeast is overriding, so we can use that to zoom to the northeast region map. So it does kind of blow up a little bit, but working on it. So, well, this went a little bit faster than I was hoping. <laughs> Did, so we have plenty of time. So anybody have any questions? You, yes, sir. Took me to to do this particular set about two days to extract the data and build a new plug in. It's all fairly automated at this point. So yes, as new versions come out, we can automate that uh, to some extent. I plan on having the documentation for how I did this out there so that people can do this for themselves as well. Um, there is a lot of information on the Census Bureau site, all kinds of crazy shapes and things that you can uh, play with. Yes, ma'am. Pardon? Well, that's what he was just talking about. We can pull the new data once the shape files are published. We can pull those and then republish a new module, a new sub module with those. 
Um, I can do that. I'm, at, my, at this point, it's my plan to do that, but if I'm unable to for some reason, like I said, I'm going to make the documentation public with the exam, you know, create a whole tutorial on how I did that. So it will be available for anyone who needs that. Yes, sir. Yes, I did, uh, did skip that. So in the uh, region editor, it's it's very simple. Uh, table view right up here in the corner, and it's just a list, alphabetized list of all of your regions in the map. And you can see here those items that we're not using are marked as hidden. And this is how you can access them to restore them or to work with them on that. So is this for admin? Well, this is for admin at this point, so um, we are looking at 508 compliance issues with this and we're looking at either adding uh, drop down, you know, select drop downs available or provide a table view that can just provide the links or whatever the interaction is. Is it navigatable with, uh, with the keyboard? I believe SVGs are uh, out of the box, but I would have to look at that often. Yeah, it's like focus and yeah. yeah. Yeah, every, every map, uh, every place the map is used, you know, we can, oops. Okay. These are just raw SVG, in these case groups, and we, we support, as I said, right out of the back, out of the box, path elements and text elements. Um, and those will be defined within the actual plugins themselves. So. Windows, now I can 
Oh. Come down here and oh, okay. so yeah, the, the the Windows color picker kind of threw me off. I used Linux for years and so, but yeah, it's it's in there. So uh, yes, sir, in the back. Is there a way to make index calls to data from the map? I'm thinking of the map and the big table of data below. Uh, currently, the way you could do that would be to you know, link to a page with you know, a URL with a filter for that. Um, it would not be too hard to create a custom plugin to create a post action, an Ajax call, or some kind of updated table on the same page. So it's something that can be done. And uh, ma'am, I believe you have? Yes. Is there an API for those alleged sensitive configuration until I get the attributes programmed? Not yet. We are looking at creating a data sources addition to this that would then allow you to do things such as style programmatically uh, for doing things like uh, election maps. So that you could say, okay, here's your data source, pull from this JSON selector, and based on that, color this region. So, so not currently, but it's there. There is an event listener you can set up on your own that will allow you to restyle the map once it's built or to update actions, whatever you need in real time. So it's it's kind of there, but not, not fully yet. Okay, so over here, uh, yes? Uh, yeah, so you include uh, the integrated GPS maps, kind of an extension to the question. Obviously, I'm not asking you to create non GPS maps, but what do you plan for extending in terms of if someone provides a one US space map and you want to have it as a separate plugin or do it or do it within the I really don't have a preference for that. Um, if you want to create it as your own sub module or if you want to submit it as a you know a pull request to add to the sub modules currently there, either one will work. So um, so like I said there's no real preference on that as of this point. Yes, ma'am. In that case, you would probably want to create a custom map that would show those it's uh, on your own, and then create that as a plugin, and then you would have your base map uh, that you can use for that purpose. So, yeah, there's no no way to edit the actual map itself once it's created. It's all data in a plugin. Yes, sir. Um, it scales pretty well. And I've not had any trouble with mobile. The only question is uh, the tooltips. We haven't uh, really thought about that. So that's something I'm going to have to take for action and figure out whether or not the tooltips are completely broken or not and uh, go from there. But it is very, very responsive for scaling. So. Yes, sir. Uh, I have two real quick. Uh, do you have any idea what, what like, it matters racing and tooling and stuff like that you use for generating the maps? Because, like, for my case, we, we got requested in our, in our building, we have to map out the, the our headquarters building for emergency exit routes, and they want to transfer map over, so like, how, how can I generate? I well, I can actually show something real quick. Um, this is something that I wanted to demo that I said was coming, the sparse maps, and then I can show you how I generated it. Can you just start typing sandbox and you should get uh, a URL? Okay, so this is the sandbox. This is where my active development's going on. And you can see right at the top, we have a GovCon 24 base map. This was that sparse map I mentioned. This map has an extra layer of data, which provides us all of the presentational only elements, the doors, the walls, and all that. And then the regions themselves are these small sections in the middle. Like I said, the bone right out there, number three. So, um, to do this, and of course it's not on the quick inkscape. 
Yeah, I eight eight state. Yeah. It's an eight state, but okay. So do you just did the shapes then all that yourself? Or did you like did you have like aerial shot you use or um, I had grabbed a graphic that they sent the speakers showing the layout, and then I just added a layer and started drawing my regions on that and grouped everything together. Cool. And then I had one other question. Um, have, have, you, have you thought about any integration where you're going to add the uh, coordinates um, for like triangulating different? Uh, maps to be integrating with like geocoding references on sites, or, or no, we haven't uh, we haven't thought about doing that simply because that's more it just feels like a better use case for Google Maps, OpenStreetMap, Leaflet, and stuff like that because um, we don't have any integration with any kind of geocoding services or anything. Sorry, but yeah, you can see here. Um, Of course, uh, cannot see the screen. <clears throat> so yeah, they provided this map, and I just, as I said, I just put my base layer, which that is the complete. Let's zoom this out. Oops. Yeah, when you're staring straight up at it, I know it's. Uh, zoom page. There we go. So yeah, in this case, using Inkscape was very easy. I just took their graphic and I just started overlaying my shapes on it, separated them out into whether they were the base layer, which in this case is all the presentational framework of it, or whether it was the active regions where we actually have something going on that the users can interact with. So. Anything else? Yes, sir. Yes, I can show this as an example. And uh, like I said, this is still super early dev code that I just managed to get it working uh, this weekend. So uh, I really wanted to show something like this here. Uh, but uh, it should be out in one of the next iterations, one of the next releases, uh, to have, have this available, as well as all the in-depth documentation on how to build the plugins for maps. Anything else? Okay. Oh, excuse me. Thank you. Did, did you have a question, sir? Yeah, that's. I've been thinking that myself. Once I realized when I installed both of these, and I've got about 110 map base maps available, and I'm, I'm thinking of something more along the lines of you know entity browser or something along that line. So just give screen, you know, thumbnails, filters. But again, we're, we're kind of early days. We're in, we're in beta at this point still. But uh, yes, that's definitely something I'm working on. Okay, thank you for coming. <laughs>